Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. The really interesting thing about that clip that I just played is the fact that it wasn't powered by a drum module at all. It was powered by this device, the eDrum In from AudioFront. This is a tiny, tiny trigger interface about the same size as a deck of cards. There really haven't been that many trigger interfaces out there in the market. There's two that are pretty much identical from Alesis and D-Drum. There's some stuff from Megadrum. Roland used to make one back in the day and then they discontinued it. And really there aren't really that many options. This one sets itself apart because of a lot of interesting software tricks that it has and the fact that it's so tiny. It's not for everybody, but I think that this is one of the more innovative products that I've played in a while. So let's jump into it. Starting off with the overall hardware. So the Edramin comes with four quarter inch inputs, and I believe you can use cable splitters with this device as well. On the other side of the device, you have another quarter inch input for either a hi-hat pedal, a piano pedal, or a guitar foot switch, whatever it is you wanna plug in there. And then you also have MIDI outs, you have USB MIDI, and then you have a power input. In the box, you're given a USB cable, but you do not get a MIDI cable with this device or even a power brick. I think you only need to plug this in as far as power goes if you're just using MIDI outs, but I never really tested it just using that port. And then finally, the last thing that comes in the box is the mount. It's an extra bit of plastic that slips onto the eDrum in, and then you can use this Velcro strap to attach it to any kind of cymbal stand, like hi-hat stands, crash cymbal stands, or even like a drum rack. It would fit on pretty much anything. And that makes it more convenient. There's really not that much more to say about the hardware because there's no screen, there's no buttons, really nothing else about this. Just a ton of inputs and you do everything on the computer side. The one last thing I should probably mention is the fact that it's 3D printed. But thankfully, it's not like a really crappy 3D print. Like whatever kind of machine they used to make this was very high end. And a lot of people wouldn't even notice that it's 3D printed just by holding it even in their hands. All right, let's jump over to the program. So there's two pages in this entire thing. You got the page that lets you control your cymbals and your drums, and then you got one page dedicated towards your hi-hat pedal or your piano pedal or your guitar foot switch. You can control all that here. But this is the page that you're gonna be working with most of the time. So this is the number of pads that I've got plugged in. And if I had another eDrum in device, it would pop up over here. You can toggle back and forth between all the different eDrum ins that you have plugged in. I'm going to click on this. And as you can see, this covers a majority of electronic drum pads out there. We can tell it whether or not it has the Yamaha style wiring because they wire their stuff uh, completely opposite to everybody else in the industry. And that's why their stuff is never quite compatible with you know opposing brands. You might get a zone or two to work, but you'll never get everything working. Thankfully though, this says it's compatible. Over here, the program lets you tell it whether or not this is a stereo input, whether or not it's a mono input, or whether or not it's dual mono input. I believe you could use a cable splitter with this because of this mode right here. Uh, over here, you have an auto calibrate feature. It'll get you like 80% of the way there, but you still have to mess around with the scan and hold time and stuff in order to really get something that's accurate to your liking. Over here, I really like the fact that you can adjust the trigger curve like this. You don't just have four preset modes to choose between. Also, I like the fact that if you press this button, you can tell it what kind of MIDI note in a visual way. The interesting thing about electronic drums is that they all run off of MIDI. But the problem is, even though every brand uses MIDI as the standard, the standard for what MIDI note equals what cymbal and what drum is different from company to company. So what might be a MIDI note for a snare for Roland might be different for Alesis or whatever. So when I first plugged this in and I was hitting my snare, I was hearing a hi-hat sound. In order to fix that, all you gotta do is pick the brand that you want, and then you just hit the snare in real life, and then you hit the snare in the photo. And then that automatically uh, selects the right MIDI note for Roland for the snare drum. And of course, you can manually do it over here as well. So the gain is sensitivity. The different companies either call it gain or sensitivity, a different slider for each one of the zones on the snare. You got your threshold, so it will ignore everything below this yellow line. And if you lower it, you'll get basically some of the more subtle hits. If you lower it too low, you might pick up some of the aftershocks and some of the uh, hits that you don't want to pick up. You have your scan time, you got your hold, you got your decay. I find this whole rim shot range finder to be very interesting. It's a visual way of seeing what the computer is seeing when you're playing on your snare. A little red line will appear whenever I'm hitting the drum. <laughs> And as you can see, it's all the way to the left. Everything in this box will trigger a snare drum head sound. Everything over here will trigger a snare rim sound. And everything up here will trigger a rim shot sound. So it's really cool. All you gotta do is drag these boxes around. So for example, let's say I'm doing a rim click sound. If, if this green box is over too much to the right, I would accidentally be triggering like a rim shot sound. 
So to fix that, all you got to do is just drag it over. So the rim shot, whenever the line is here, you know it's accurate. Whenever the rim click is over here, you know that you're accurate as well. Hot spot suppression. This is a very interesting feature. We all know that wherever your, your sensor is on your mesh or your cymbal, that's gonna be the most sensitive part of the drum because the sensor, the piezo, is right there. When you hit exactly where it is, it's gonna be really spiky. It's gonna be a really hot spot on the drum. And if you move an inch to the left, all of a sudden it's a lot less sensitive there. They try to mitigate that. You have to increase the scan time to three milliseconds, I believe, to enable this. And then you can set your threshold and the amount of suppression that you want. So for me personally, I found that this thing, it might work a little bit, but it's not gonna drastically reduce your hot spotting, at least with the settings that I've played around with. I'm not an expert with this program, so I could just be using it wrong. It seems like a cool feature, but you really have to fine tune it in order to get the results that really stand out. I'm really happy that they tried to tackle this problem though. Companies such as Roland will stack their piezos in a certain way to remove it on a hardware side, but usually not on the software end. So that's cool to see. As you can see over here, you also have the ability to adjust positional sensing and it can do positional sensing as CC or as note. So that's really cool that you can toggle back and forth between that. For some reason, I got better results on positional sensing with my Simmons mesh snare than I did with my Roland mesh snare. But that again could be the fact that uh, I don't have settings set up correctly. Another feature that this has, you can actually get a second zone from one piezo. And I tested it with a crappy mesh snare that I bought for $5. And then I tested it with a pad that I threw together. I took a cap percussion pad and then I put a piezo underneath of it and just like gaff taped it there. And believe it or not, it actually works. You can get two zones from one sensor, which kind of blew my mind. Now you're probably wondering, Justin, what's the catch? And the catch is that it's still trying to guess what is the edge and what is the center. So it's not perfect every single time, as you can see in this clip right here. Now, of course, the people at AudioFront know this, and they said in the manual that it doesn't work on every single pad and every single use case, but they put it in there so you can play around with it and see if it will help you in whatever kind of pad or situation that you're in. I'm really glad that they included this feature because it's just really clever and I, I like it. I find that it works better if you just need to have two zones on a pad that you're just gonna hit one time or two. If you just need to trigger a sound every once in a while uh, from a two zone pad, it could be useful, but not as something I would play all day, every day. Another really, really interesting feature that this system has is something called Bell Sense. This is where you can take one cable and power a three zone roll and ride symbol, which traditionally needs to have two cables, which is really, really interesting. So it's kind of like Edge Sense, but it creates a bell zone instead. So let me play some playing footage and then talk about what it's like to use this in real life. When I first heard about this feature, it kind of blew my mind because I've never heard of any sort of software that let you get one cable powering an entire three zone roll and ride cymbal. Like even some Alesis ride cymbals need to have two cables. It's just because of the way it's wired. Now there is, there is something you're giving up. Whenever you enable this feature, you're going to save a cable, meaning you can plug in an extra pad, but the downside is gonna be that the bell zone is suddenly twice as large and it takes up a good chunk of the bow area. And the reason why this can be a little bit annoying is that while you're playing this ride cymbal, you'll accidentally trigger the bell sound because your stick just moved an inch up and you don't know exactly where it starts and where it ends. And also that means that the playing surface for the bow area is now this little sliver. The Roland CY13 and the Roland CY15 are pretty small cymbals to begin with. And when you cut down the amount of bow space, you're gonna accidentally play on the bell sound occasionally. So that's really the big downside. You can sort of mitigate this by adjusting the setting, but that means that not all of your bell hits will be completely accurate either. So it's kind of like a give and a take. It's a really cool feature, I'm glad they have it, but if I was using a three zone rolled ride cymbal, I would probably usually just use two cables. I really like that they included the feature though. In case you're wondering, yes, this program does recognize cymbal chokes. So if you want to hit your cymbal and then stop it from ringing, you can just pinch the edge of your cymbal and the program will make it stop ringing. And they also added in an extra feature. 
you can assign a MIDI note to choking the symbol. The reason for this is that Ableton really struggles with aftertouch messages apparently. So they added this feature in case you're using Ableton with this program, with uh, eDrum in. Okay, so jumping ahead to the pros and cons section of the video, there's really not that much not to like about this device. It's a very well thought out device with a lot of interesting features that I've never seen before. This is one of the more innovative electronic drum pieces of gear that I've seen in a long time. I like the fact that it's very compact. It's about 150 bucks, which, is, which I think is pretty fair. They have mounts for cymbal stands. You can use it with any kind of drum pad. You can really adjust everything to your heart's content. It's just very well thought out. Now, as far as downsides go, there's really not that many. The first is that the USB cable that they include in the box is pretty short meaning that if you use the included cable, you're gonna to have to have the eDrum in very close to your computer at all times. So to fix that problem, I just used a different longer cable that I had lying around the house. It does have a power input, and I don't know exactly what kind of power uh, like supply I would have had to use if I did need to use it. So I feel like they should have included that in the box, even though I've never run into even needing to use it because I'm using USB all the time. I feel like they probably should have included a power adapter in the box. Another thing to mention about this whole system is that I don't think this program is really designed for beginners in mind. Definitely a beginner could learn how to use it if they just read the manual enough times and they watched all the tutorial videos and really spent the time to really learn how to use the software. But it's not really made for beginners. It's made assuming that you know a lot about electronic drums already. Whenever you buy an electronic drum set, you plug it in and it's just playable out of the box. It might not be completely optimized, but it just works out of the box. With this program, if you don't know anything about electronic drums, if you don't know anything about MIDI, this stuff could be kind of confusing. Like for example, do you really, if you were completely new to electronic drums, would you know what gain is? Why are there two gain faders? Threshold, what's scan time, what's hold time, what's decay, what's hot spot suppression, like what's X stick, rim shot range, uh, calibrate, What's all this stuff? What's MIDI? Like if you don't know anything about this stuff, it could be a tad intimidating. And a lot of times the, the problem with electronic drummers is that when you're really deep into electronic drum culture, you completely forget how much knowledge that you've absorbed over the years. You completely forget how much you know. So I feel like this is for people that kind of know electronic drums, have a little bit of a background. I don't wanna say you can't use this as a beginner though because if you spend enough time, you can learn how to do anything. And then finally, one thing to mention is that if you don't have the settings quite right on your computer, or if you don't have the right kind of computer, you could really experience a lot of latency with this program. Because number one, if you have trigger settings set up in a certain way, you could just have a lot of latency by definition. So for example, if I had a scan time of five milliseconds, that might mean that I'll never get a false trigger ever, but that also means that my scan time is five milliseconds, and then I got a hold time of three milliseconds, and then there's the milliseconds of latency that I'm getting from the program itself, from uh, Easy Drummer itself, and it's taken all that time to process. If you don't have the right kind of hardware and the right kind of settings in place, you could be suffering from a lot of bad latency with this program. I would highly recommend using it on some sort of Mac device, like a Mac Mini, a MacBook Pro, an iMac, just something made by Apple, because they tend to work better under these low latency conditions. Windows machines just, you really have to spend a lot more time on the settings to really get a good experience using something like this. I work as a stagehand, and whenever I'm setting up for a band, inevitably one of the band members is running something off of a MacBook Pro. It's just the one kind of device that all the audio professionals and musicians tend to use. It's not necessarily about the power of the computer because this is more powerful than 99% of MacBooks. It's got an Intel Core i7, 64 gigabytes of RAM. It's got SSDs inside of it. It's got an Nvidia 2070 inside of it. It's not necessarily the power of the machine, it's just how fast it works under low latency conditions. And I'm also using a, an external audio interface as well. Okay, so that is the video. And shout out to you for watching all the way to the end. You're the real MVP. See you guys in a few. First of all, you're gonna to need to download and install the program. That'll take you just a couple of minutes. It's very easy to do. But here's how you use this with inside of Reaper. We double click to create a new track. We turn on effects. We choose what kind of sound we want. I'm gonna use Easy Drummer, but that's not really important. All we need is a sound source of some kind. I'm gonna arm the recording. I'm gonna go over here and turn monitoring on, which is vitally important because you can't hear anything unless that button is clicked. And then finally, we wanna tell it to get MIDI from the eDrum in black. So just click on that, go to input MIDI, eDrum black, and then I just select all channels. And that's it, you're ready to go.